Hey everyone, so I have a little adventure going on today. We are going to DIY coffee table. I've been so inspired by a lot of Swedish DIYers. You guys are awesome. So I've been on a huge rabbit trail just kind of finding all of these DIY projects and it's been keeping me busy. But one in particular I fell in love with and I will link her name and her um, Instagram down below they did a phenomenal concrete style table using forms and it was so simple i actually if you remember on my channel my husband and i did a restoration hardware kind of style table and we made a concrete top so the concept is fairly similar to that one only that we the only difference is that we have to build our forms and hubby is already up on that. He already knows how to get that going. And so we're running off to Lowe's and we are going to buy all of our um, supplies and hopefully this shouldn't take too long. The only issue I'm gonna have is finding a glass top. I know we have some glass um, stores here. We're gonna have to probably get a custom cut. Um, and so yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, so let's go off to Lowe's. I'll show you, I'll pan in and show you all the things that we are going to buy and all of the items will also be linked down below so if you're interested in doing your own they will be in the description box so make sure that you check that out so i'm currently trying to figure out this is what we're going to use to cut the molds um you have to get these big sheets so there's different grades so this one has the wood texture to it um and this one down here that we were looking at is smooth it's like a like an MDF um, so deciding on if we want texture in the mold or not <laughs> alrighty so change of plans we're not gonna do the um, MDF board we wound up coming down to this aisle and we found these things, these tubes that are meant for cement work. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with concrete. So the concrete's only gonna be this thick. This is gonna be in the inside. This is gonna be our mold. And yeah, so rather than carry extremely heavy, large MDF boards, we're gonna go this route because I actually wanted a cylinder. I did want a square, but for the sake of safety and more trouble and more time, we're gonna go this route because I can, I can visualize it. I, I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm actually going to cut it so that it's really short and low profile. And so we only need one. All right, so this is it. We're gonna go check out now and get some lunch because I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, so the plan I came up with for making the 10 inch legs, I've cut the cylinders down to 12 inches, measured off on the interior 10 inches, cut the secondary interior tube to 10 inches, measured off eight inches, so there'll be a two inch gap between the interior cylinder and the bottom, which will technically be the top of the legs. And then I will drill at 10 inches holes to put these rods this way. So let me see the, the hole inches. marks. So let me show you right here and here. Okay. That line is 10 inches. Okay. I'll drill and through. this line, what is this line down here? This is eight inches. Okay. So the eight inches plus the two gives you the 10. It's 10 on the interior, so there will be so a- there's little dots two in there inch. too. Yeah, yeah, I'll pour the concrete up to here. This will be offset at this, at the 10 inches. Mm -hmm. And with these through it, they'll go through the cylinders, technically they'll be through it, and it'll hold, hold it, it in the air. Suspend it. I'll yeah. make a bottom here. So the cement will only fill the interior circumference of this, okay. making it hollow. Okay, okay so here's a quick update with what my husband had just explained. He threw these little uh, metal pole skewers. You can use whatever you have. Just make sure they're sturdy. Um, metal rods or wooden rods would work. Um, dowels, anything. Dowels, that's actually the correct word I was looking for. So he plans on just filling it up just about an inch or so. It'll be two inches. Two inches, which exactly. Which is how much the difference between the bottom and here is. Right, so um, we didn't explain. He did tape off a little base to that. Um, he just used some painter's tape 
and close that off. Yep, it's just a cardboard box and yep. this is cardboard anyway. And so he placed cardboard under here because this is open as well. So yeah, you have to I'll, remember. I'll caulk this and make it sealed. Yeah, and so we're gonna seal this with the silicone caulk. And yeah, now we're ready to pour. And um, this is the exciting part. <laughs> That's the bottom. That's where we put the one cone right. and so, inside that we pulled out already. Let me back out. Get that out of the way. There she is. That's basically your leg like that. And it's probably still a little bit wet. That's yeah, why the not. top. That's why the top is a little darker. It's still slightly wet. All those little marks. I love it. It looks so good. It looks really industrial funky. Yeah. Okay, guys, we have to get ready to pick up our glass. And they're just waiting for the glass. They're still drying. You can see that the tops are dark and the light parts are where it is drying. It is all finished. We went this morning and picked up our glass. We had our glass cut at a local glass shop, um, but I know that Home Depot and Lowe's also cuts glass and um, it would have taken a little bit longer. So we decided to go with our local glass shop, which was just a little bit more expensive, but honestly guys, um, they had it cut in one day and yeah, so I paid a little bit more, but they were able to rush the order for me and here it is. This is a 67 by 36 inch piece of glass and these are the two cylinders that we made with our mortar mix and we also bought little rubber feet um, so to protect the table from moving and sliding around. So now I want to take this a little bit further and show you how I'm going to actually style this table. Um, for obvious reasons, I'm going to keep it as minimal as possible, but I did select a few things here to my right that I'm going to include on this beautiful tabletop without congesting it and overcrowding it. I'm just going to add a few books and a few things and yeah, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to add to the table. I always start with coffee table books and guys, a lot of you have asked me where I get my coffee table books and I always get them from Amazon unless they're gifted to me or I happen to score them at a vintage shop. So, so this book from Habitat I did get on Amazon last year and I'm going to set that one right there this way. And I love using vertical and horizontal angles for my books. I think they create a, a nice visual um, appearance and so I also love to use shorter books on top of longer books to create some height. And this is, okay, so this one's the Kinfolk Table Book. I also got this. Actually, I got this from Anthropology right in their store. They do sell this book. I also have this Peter Lindbergh um, book, which is phenomenal as a photographer. I appreciate this book so much. There's some great editorials in here. And I even like sometimes just opening up the book to a really pretty center page and just leaving it open. So when your guests are sitting, this is just something that they see. So it's almost like a little piece of art right on your coffee table. Um, I'm not gonna do that this time around. Again, I'm keeping it very minimal. So I'm just gonna put it vertically this way. And then I always have a candle going on every table that I have. And I have a Byredo. This is the scent in woods and it's so good. Um, so I will place that there. And then I usually have like little catch-all dishes. Um, I have a vintage shop called Vendi Collections. I'll put the link down below. You guys can check that out. Um, I tend to come out with a new collection every two weeks. Here is a genuine little onyx catch-all dish that I will just add there and just add a little color, a little texture. And then for my final piece, I'm going to 
put a little floral arrangement. And now guys, I got this arrangement. This is a beautifully crafted dried floral arrangement from a company called Pinker Times Boutique. I will link them down below. And I think this fits beautifully right in this space. And I think the choice of the vase that I have is great. It gives me that very 80s vibe. So guys, this is the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I do lots of DIYs. I also do home styling and thrift with me videos. So if that's the kind of content that you enjoy, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel. I will bring you a lot more of that type of content. And so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this week and I'll see you in my next video soon.